The Australian land registries are private. In this video, I would like to examine the Australian land system. Hi, my name is Dr. Alexey Konashevich and you're on Blockchain State. This talk is not about blockchain, but since I've been working on the concept of a new generation land registry system, I have a broad interest in land systems around the world. The Australian land system draws particular attention because its state land title registries are operated by private companies, specifically half of them, four of eight registries. But let us first get a broader understanding of what this system looks like. The Commonwealth of Australia has six states and two territories, each with separate land registry. Australia has a so-called Torrens title system, which is very similar to all European countries. In the future, I will make a video comparing these systems and who was the first to invent a so-called title by registration system. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it. A title by registration means if a landowner and buyer want to legitimize their land title deed, they have to bring it to the state agency to get it registered. Otherwise, such a deal will not be valid. In Australia, such a system has worked since the 19th century, but for almost 150 years, the old English land system worked in parallel, meaning that the owner could bring their title to the Torrens title registry or alternatively could stay with the old system uh, in which such an owner had to prove their ownership by keeping the chain of title deeds. Who sold the title to whom? To prove that they were the legitimate landowner. And only in the end of the 20th century, Australia decided to completely do away with the old system and to keep the title registry as the only valid source of truth about property rights. The old system, by the way, still works in the United States if you want to know whether the blockchain fits into various land systems, you can watch this video. You probably know that algorithms on YouTube check if a viewer reacts to the video. So please hit like under this video if you wish to keep me doing my research on blockchain. Thanks. In 2008, Australia introduced electronic conveyancing, the system of electronic lodgement of documents to the registries. This enables not only remote transactions, but also smoother interstate interaction, as they created a technical layer above the electronic lodgement network that United States registries and a national body that coordinates such an interaction the Australian Registrar's National Electronic Conveyancing Council. Within the Electronic Lodgement Network, there are two commercial operators, PEXA and Simply. Their applications enable access to users. Well, by users, I mean lawyers that make real estate agreements and register them through these applications. Currently, PEXA is the largest application provider in the country. In 2021, New South Wales completely did away with papers. Uh, from now on, registration of land dealing is available only electronically. I have to clarify that people in Australia don't interact with the electronic registry directly. All transactions are mediated through conveyancers, solicitors and financial institutions that are authorized to lodge electronic documents in the registry through these applications, PEXA or Simply. So there is no way Alice and Bob, buyer and seller, can commit um, and register a transaction without an intermediary. To make this picture full, I have to mention there are also native titles. These are lands that belong to Aboriginal people. They have a different system and I will not touch on that in this video. New South Wales became the first state to privatize their land registry. It happened in 2017. And I am using the word privatized as it is usually 
referred to in the media, but for the record, it was a concession deed, in which a government granted an exclusive right for 35 years to provide registry and titling services. One private company bought this right for 2.6 billion Australian dollars. In my research paper, you will find details who exactly invested into it and who owns this private company. Operated under the business name of New South Wales Land Registry Services. But to satisfy your interest, I can say that it was four different investment funds, one of which was a superannuation fund. To authorize this deal, uh, the state parliament adopted a special legislative act. And since then, this private company has operated the land registry. To avoid any sort of misunderstanding, I have to say that even though there is a private operator of the registry that collects fees from every transaction, the government retained all the authority over the system. The regulator adopts regulations and establishes obligatory practices. Now, who is the regulator? The state has a twofold government supervision with different roles. The political role belongs to the Minister for Customer Service and Digital Government. But it can change from time to time, therefore you can check who is responsible for it by opening the Real Property Act and finding the information page that indicates which office is currently responsible for the land registry. Nevertheless, the Minister doesn't take part in the everyday life of the registry. The minister may give directions to the register general requiring the implementation by the register general of policies or requirements of general application that the minister is satisfied are necessary or desirable in the public interest to protect the integrity of the registry. The second figure in this system that is directly responsible for the registry is the Register General that adopts regulations and instructions. The concession deed provided the government the right to get the registry back from the private operator. South Australia. In the same year as the New South Wales in 2017, the state of South Australia sold its registry for 1.6 billion Australian dollars. And the situation here is almost identical. It was a concession deed in which the government granted the exclusive rights to operate the registry and provide registry services. In this case, for 40 years though. The government retained regulatory functions and the right to get it back in case something goes wrong. The regulator consists of a political figure the South Australian Minister for Planning and the regulator, the State Register General with similar functions of adopting rules and practices of registration and supervision of the registry and titling services. And to satisfy your interest who owns the registry in South Australia, there are investment groups connected to banking and investment capitals and a pension fund. As you see again, no sensation. Victoria. The third state to privatize its land registry was Victoria. The next year, after selling New South Wales and South Australia registries in 2018, Victoria granted a 40-year concession to a private company for $2.86 billion Australian dollars. The company has a business name of Serve. Like the other states, it is supervised by two government offices. The Coordinating Minister for the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, a political figure responsible in the Victorian government for land registry system. And a direct regulation by the Register General, whose functions are defined in the law. Similar to other states, to adopt rules, practices and guidelines of property registration and titling services. The government retains the overall authority over the state land system and can get it back if needed from the owner. 
In this case, there is only one owner, a superannuation fund. Western Australia. The state of Western Australia became the fourth and the last one in the Commonwealth to sell out its registries. Those who heard something about privatization of the Queensland land registry, wait for it, I'll get to it in a moment. Western Australia got 1.4 billion Australian dollars for its privatization. The concession deed was enacted by the state parliament in 2019 for 40 years. The government retained political and regulatory roles and the right to get the registry back from the private operator in case something goes wrong. There are three figures that supervise the registry system. Minister of Lands, Register of Titles and Commissioner of Titles. The private operator has got a business name of Landgate. There are three investment groups who own this private company. Queensland. The state of Queensland made a step of incorporating its land registry from the State Department to a commercial company in 2021. The company operates under the name of Titles Queensland. The corporate rights of this company are left in state ownership mediated through four government funds, uh, long-term assets, debt retirement fund, housing investment fund, pass to treaty fund and carbon reduction investment fund and national injury insurance scheme Queensland. As the state audit report explains, as per the law, these funds may do the next step and sell the right to yield profits from the registry. And perhaps in the future we'll see a full or partial privatization of the fund. Formerly, the state control company has got a concession to operate the registry for 50 years starting from 2021, and the asset was evaluated for a whopping 8 billion Australian dollars, almost three times as much as the most expensive Victorian registry so far. As the current legislation states, the Minister for Resources is a responsible political figure in the Queensland government. The direct regulator is the chief executive who establishes the rules and practices of title registration. Tasmania. Tasmania stays with the same land system that was introduced years ago. It has a responsible minister, the Minister for Parks, and the Land Titles Office within the Department of the Natural Resources and Environment. The Recorder of Titles is the statutory officer of the Land Titles Office, responsible for establishing rules and practices of land registration and operation of the land registry. Australian Capital Territory and Northern Territory the other members of the Commonwealth, the Australian Capital Territory and uh, the Northern Territory have similar structure and authority due to their political specifics. They have legislative assemblies, um, but they can be overruled directly by the Parliament of the Commonwealth. Their local governments are responsible for land registries. In both cases, Attorney Generals supervise the land registry. Uh, registered generals of the respective territories are responsible for uh, the operation of the land registry and establishing the rules of registration. In the Australian Land Capital Territory, the land office is called the Australian Capital Territory Land Information Systems, while Northern Territory remain with the old style name of the Land Titles Office. That's it. To summarize, I can say that since the first privatization in 2017, there have never been any issues with commercial operators. No dramas happened because the registries got in private hands. The Australians get quality registry and titling services and their governments supervise their registry and retain control and authority over their land system. While private operators have got a source of revenue from fees for transactions and 
searches in their databases. One thing remains unclear to me. So back in the days when public services were a government function, the government didn't do business with it. The citizens' fees were supposed to compensate for public services provided by the state agency. Now when it becomes a business on which the private operator earns profit, I have only one question. Why only one operator? not a free competitive market of multiple private registry operators. But let's leave this question open for future research and reflection. Thanks for your attention. Hit that like button and subscribe. See you in the next video on Blockchain State.